I'm going to say S chord, side chord, <laughs> all chord. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> there we go. There it is. There it is. So in the beginning, you enjoyed it. I was, in the beginning, yeah, it was fun. It wasn't no drugs involved. It was just for sexual and entertaining. Oh my goodness. I had a gentleman who was uncircumcised. And you're supposed to peel that back and clean it the proper way or whatever. And if you kill tips, I don't care. But in, he had a semi sweat over that. Oh my God, I have to literally tell him, um, I need you to go wash thoroughly with some hot soapy towels because baby, I can't chop you until you do this. There is men out there that just don't take care of themselves. And if you're not hygiene, well, And if you're not hygienable, I can't do anything with you. I had a friend who was 22 at the time, and he was actually a um, pimp. He propositioned me, he was like, well, I need you on my team. Since you're a transgender, you add the flavor to the, the whole escort thing. My first actual trick was, oh my goodness, me and a few of the other ladies, we were pretty much working on the street and this gentleman just happened to came by and he was like, oh my God, you're so attractive. And I didn't think nothing of it. And then I was like, well, we can go to my place or whatever. And um, I told him I was a massage therapist. I mean, sometimes you have to tell these John something that's going to give them that to want to proceed to go away. So we got back to my place. I heated up some baby oil in the microwave, gave him a uh, 45, uh, 45 minute body massage, full body massage. It led to the upper escapees of me necking, sucking on the nipple, being descriptive way. And we both came. And I was tripping when he paid me the 700 because I didn't even think that it was worth that. He was like, yeah, I'm just gonna give you this. And I'm like, I appreciate your donation. And later when I finally did come in, that's when I found out it was seven. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is it, this is what I wanna do. And I'm you like, were 14 at the time? Yes, he was in his 30s. A older um, Caucasian, he was actually a um, professor for Portland State University. Brandy represents the low-income, underage minority that oftentimes turns to sex work to survive everyday life. Was there ever a fear you mm -hmm. proposition yourself to potentially an undercover police officer? Actually, I had that fear in the back of my mind always, yes. Even when I was out there on the streets, working the streets, or even if I was doing it on the internet or however, I was cautious with what I would say. Like for me, I use massage therapist, research worker or whatever, you know. Um, I use them as a way to decoy my job that way. Um, if there is a police officer online, he can get me for solicitation. With being an escort, I would um, escort older gentlemen to certain type of events. Then there was other ones where I was sexually escorting. I would give it to them. Oral, anal, and all the above. <laughs> Fabulous. Very good. What was life like for you as a sex worker? Okay, repeat that question again. What was life like for you 
as a sex worker? Well, it was, how can I say? Physical abuse and rape happened every day in Brandy's former world of sex work, and it still happens today. I had a gentleman, or two gentlemen actually, who urinated on me. Well, as they was urinating, they aimed the dead at my mouth. And I had to literally, whatever, wherever it shot, I had to catch it like, like if I was playing football. <laughs> I got a thousand dollars. That right there really was the most degrading moment of my life. I've never had anybody urinate on me, force me to do something that just wasn't a normal sex routine. It seems like the Caucasian ones are more into that. You know, they like pain, they like torture, or you're such a whore. That's what yeah. Johns would call you. Yeah, suck my c Now, I'm so used to being called a bitch because why? Well, I am a bitch. <laughs> I have been um, raped by John. He got overwhelmed with, <laughs> how can I say, my sexual skills. He didn't want the session to end. And he literally threw me back on the bed, pulled my pants down got on top of me and forced his way in. And if it wouldn't have been for the fact that like my phone was like right there on the nightstand, I don't know what I would have did. Because what I did is I took my phone because it was on vibrate. And I, this is something I had there for years when it came down to John's. If I found myself in trouble or something, I'll be able to turn off the keypad and text my, um, my bodyguard or whatever and let him know to come up. And that's exactly what I did. I need you. 36 seconds later, my guy was at the door with his nine millimeter. The gentleman went and quit and the dude let his gun off. And oh my God, you should have seen the gentleman run. He ran so fast. Couldn't even, he didn't even have his pants all the way up. He just ran out the door. So you always had security? Always. There was never a moment I didn't. I'm always having somebody like three feet behind me. But I also carry my own protection too. I have my taser and I have my mace. Would the Johns even know that you had security behind you? None of them are aware of anything. Some Johns are crazy that they will shoot you and the John. Just for the John, I mean, shoot you and the bodyguard just for you knowing, for them knowing that the bodyguard know about them. It's like, Whatever they do, they want to do it on a down low situation. They don't want it to come to light. Son, who actually pulled a gun on me and forced me to have sex with another gentleman who was tremendously well endowed. And when I say well endowed, I, I, I can't even put together what the size or the width or anything, but it was something that I could not handle. And I ended up having a few stitches and a few staples. I had a gentleman who paid me $700, take my fist and fist him in his anal to the point where the gentleman ended up bleeding intensely. So at that point, it made me really really realize this is not the career I need. Yeah, I've been paid anywhere from $800 to $3,000 for bizarre sex encounters. Brandy says that many sex workers use drugs to cope with the sexual acts they have to perform, which often leads to drug addiction. I was about 19 and I was introduced to cocaine. I found myself spending three to four hundred dollars per day just snorting away, just like I was like Scarface. The high made me hornier, so I was able to perform my job a lot more. Make sure both of us were getting what we both wanted. I was into the biggest penis. I was 
you know, that type of thing. So um, when it came down to John, I had had John that had the most humongous penises or some that just didn't have that. And I'm the type of person, I'm polite. I'm not going to sit there and tell you no or whatever. I'm going to proceed and go because I need that money. Would you always use protection? Yes and no. Most of the time, would you say raw? You practice raw sex? Yeah. I love having sex with condoms or whatever because I know you got to take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to protect him and protect this. But then also, the condom would get in the way, literally, to me. That's because I want to I want to give you that ultimate orgasm. I want you to feel the orgasm for real. So there was times I really wouldn't use a condom, including eating the anus. Now we're going to pause you there. I'm going to get back. Is that right? <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. So Scorpios have a... A hard sex drive. If your wife can't do the job or your husband can't get a, do the job, I'm gonna be the one to intervene and make sure you have that pleasure. In me. I've had jobs tell me that they don't even communicate with their wives. That their wives just, it's like they got married and then everything just changed. Type thing. You know, they want the friendship, the conversation, they wanna do things. I was giving them something. They, they must need it. They needed that timing, that, that, that compassion. Just like when it comes down to Valentine's Day, men always assume that a woman just wants jewelry or money. No, we just want your time. You know, and that's the thing about it. These Johns, all they want is time, quality time. Some of them want sexual, some of them don't. Somebody just want, some of them just want to be in the presence of somebody. You know, so it's very, it's a very of different reasons why these Johns reach out to street workers or escorts. What would you say was the moment that you're like, I can't do this anymore? After seeing my best friend killed. And then again, I got another wake up call. A gentleman that I was, you could kind of say dating, but not dating, did not tell me he had HIV. And I contracted the virus, 